Hello everybody, FPV Slacker, Alaska Drone Racing League. Have you purchased various FPV smart cable? If you have, you are experiencing a problem with it malfunctioning. If you have not experienced it yet, you will. But don't panic. I'm going to show you how to fix it. Furious FPV smart cable. The problem that numerous people are reporting is the connection where this wire connects to this board right in here. There are three wires that connect to that board. The wire is frail and breaks after limited use. It's an easy repair. The hardware, this box and this box on the other end, is good hardware. It's worth doing the repair and it's simple. The process though can be a little frustrating. You have to remove this sticker which does not look as good when you put it back. Then you take four screws out to separate the two pieces here. And then you, this collar right here is not glued to this cable. You can slide this collar back. You cut off a short piece of the wire in there. You re-solder it back onto the three points. Slide this back. Put a case back together. And it's good. Like I say, this is the second cable that I have had this problem with. I did the repair on the first one already and it works fine. I haven't had to put it through a lot of use because I've been using this second cable. But uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I believe Furious FPV should recall this product due to this poor quality control where these are connecting in here. We'll see what happens. So uh, let's put it together. Okay, now remove these four screws. On my first one, the stud that it screws into broke off of the bottom, but I just super glued the stud back on and put the screw in and it's okay. Okay, there it is. Just like that. Now we will cut this electrical tape, this liquid electrical tape will, re will cut it so it releases from this collar. Careful not to add blood to these electronics. Let's see if that's enough. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I cannot pull it back this way because there's a stopper right there. So the case and the stopper come together right about there. So I cannot slide this thing backwards. I can only slide it forward. That's right. Sorry about that. Now the messy part of removing electrical tape from this side. And uh, be careful about the screen here. There's a ribbon cable that it's attached with so when you're handling this be careful about that screen this is a lot of electric tape liquid electric tape there's no way I'm going to pick all of that clean well this is going to take some time I'll come back to recording once I get this cleaned off. Okay, I'm back for just a second here. I don't know if you can tell here, but right here you can see the solder pad. And there are three solder pads right on the edge of this board. Uh, excuse me while I figure out how to move this. There are three solder pads right here on the edge of this board. So why does this black wire go all the way 
past that solder pad and into this goop which is proven to be very challenging the first one was easily well not easily frustrating but I could just cut off and pick off with the tweezers I'm having to use my uh, hobby knife here to chip off this hardened black stuff and uh, you can even see that this red wire the casing is past the pads so why is that wire going up in there and I suspect the white wire over here will probably do the same so let's see if we can get a better view here pad wire why come to think of it it isn't even lining up this way I mean there's the pad there's the pad why isn't the wire attached to that pad right coming out it instead it is I don't know how it's attached I'll try to get this stuff off without actually cutting this wire but you can see this ground wire right here is way past that pad interesting okay I have opened the case from the first cable that I've already repaired and as you can see the pads are right here on the edge of the board so uh, like I was saying it makes no sense for this black wire to be going farther up into this black stuff past the pad and the red wire and you can see the casing of a white wire right there as well which is what way up way up in this area and so it's kind of hard to see that black on black but it's right there sticking up right above these three I open this one up so I can see what I'm working with and how to avoid these three components right here is what I'm concerned with I don't want to knock those off but I see I've got a, a nice gap in between the pads and the components that I should be able to easily uh, or you know carefully get my blade down in between these two but as you can see it's a simple fix once you get into it okay I finally gotten down to it I've got it chipped to where you can see the white box all the way around the solder pads so I'm not concerned about hitting those components that are past that white box corn towards the center of the board what I believe is happening here is you can see on this negative pad there is a hole in the goop where the black wire went in and you can also see right here there's a red wire right there and right there and you can see the two white wires right there so what I believe they did was they ran the wires up this way looped back and then soldered onto the pads went up loop back soldered up loop back solder probably an attempt to uh, avoid flex of the wire in the pad area well that's not that there there we go they don't want the flex between the wire and the pad right here but that's not the problem the problem is the wire itself is frail so even if it's flexed down here at this point or even farther back at this point even you know it's it's gonna it's gonna fr uh, break the wire inside the case is gonna break <clears throat> so now even though I have repaired this one like this I strongly suspect I will be repairing it again because the wire inside this casing is going to break again. So like I say on this other board they brought this wire up past the pad area looped it back around and then soldered it on. So this looks kind of ugly right now but I'm going to clean it up a bit more and then re-solder and uh, I don't think those wires being in that black stuff, these wires up in here, as long as there's, uh, there's nothing touching these ends here, there's no wire frays coming out of these ends. 
So I may put a slight layer of a, a real thin layer of electric uh, liquid electrical tape across that face right there. Uh, I'm going to put this all back together and give it a test. Now on Furious FPV Facebook, you will see that uh, others have actually replaced this cable itself with some uh, other better cabling, which is probably what I'm going to do on the next failure, which means I'm going to be doing this, I've done it, I'll have done it twice, I'll be doing it two more times, because like I say, this hardware, now this, this is good hardware, this is a good board, and it's, a, and the smaller button that it connects to is a good board as well, and, and the concept is good, but the quality control, I mean, given, given the amount of difficulty I had, to uh, get into there. Now when this stuff is put on at the factory, I don't believe the quality inspection would be done before the black goop is put on. They probably put it on, test the connection, and that is the quality control time point. So uh, I believe Furious FPV probably has a good case to go back to the manufacturer in a uh, recall scenario and place the burden where it probably truly belongs although it is Furious's responsibility to source the quality cable that is not being used it's an inferior cable to begin with so maybe that's the whole the whole gotcha right there so in any case I'm gonna put all this back together and come back to you this jacket here is pretty soft and so is this jacket on these three wires so what you should do is to get that knife up underneath that jacket you don't want to nick you don't want to nick these wires so kind of gently get that up under there and try to just just enough to get it going just and then you can, what you can do is you can just kind of peel this jacket back like that. So you don't have to use the blade. Peel the jacket back. Stop it from peeling down your thumbnail. And just go in the circle. Peel it back like that. And then take that part. Put the wires into it like so. Get it nice and snug down against the stop, which is right about in there. Get that jacket up against that stop. Right in there like that. And then as a as an example. As an example, I'll show you here. You don't need a whole lot. You don't need a whole lot of length here. So I'd say that's about what a quarter of an inch. Uh, quarter of an inch of jacket, an eighth of an inch of wire. Okay, the job is done. Make sure when you do this now. The white wire is on the side of the board with this uh, buzzer. So it goes white, red in the center, ground on the bottom. White, red, black. Let's see if we're going to find any magic smoke. Okay, here we go. Power is. Connected. I see no magic smoke. Let's turn it over. Push the button. It's working there. Let's go up here to the smaller box, which will not have power when the problem, before you fix the problem. 
I see lights in the small box. Let's shut it off. Success. Let's turn it on with the small box. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, and pilots of all stripes and sizes. Fixed. Let's turn this off real quick, like here. Now, if these wires, you know, let's, let's even unplug the battery, as a matter of fact. If these wires were poor quality enough to fray and have a cause a problem, well, I fully anticipate the same issue where these wires connect to this board here and where these wires connect to the board here. So a lot of uh, a lot of basic work may be needed when you do this.